Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Global Cooling Rundown. So many stories talking about the disappearance of flies, bees, mosquitoes, and ants across farms worldwide. Definitely has to be something with the UV shift. We got sunburned dolphins, sunburned whales. The eyesight of these insects is far different from the human. They see an UV and they see it a lower spectrum as well. So we're going to be looking for shifts in the net radiation. Also, these light wavelengths can affect behavioral ecology, which means when they eat, when they sleep, when they reproduce. Also, light wavelengths can attract or repel different insects, specifically yellow in orchards at night to turn off the feeding mechanism of insects. Green does the same thing. It affects the sleep and the eating patterns of different insects at 505 to 570 nanometers. You could even kill insects with different UV wavelengths. Indigo violet 417 kills mosquitoes. So it's all about the changes in the sun's UV output right now with the grand solar minimum intensification. What's going to happen with our insect life that pollinates our crops globally? Geoengineeringwatch.org showing increases at 250 and 300 nanometers in the UVB range. The leading powers on this planet that are controlling our societies knew this grand solar minimum was going to manifest around this time. So they created the IPCC to give you an excuse so when you saw the weather changing, you would believe it's because of CO2, not because of the sun. Here's the forecast and how the intensification is going to play out over the next couple of years. We are out of time and they are still playing games. More countries caught manipulating their climate data. Australia, Paraguay, and Switzerland. Homogenization of data shows higher temperatures. Also with Australia, there's that crossover point there as well. They've been trying to mask this mid-century warming in the 1900s. Sea ice has actually gained since last year. And now it's the 11th warmest April on record. I thought it was supposed to warm into infinity. And it's all downward from here. The more cosmic rays there are, the more cloud formation. 19% more clouds during this next solar cycle. And I cannot ingrain to you enough what this chart means to your life and the intensification and the rapid onset of weather change that's going to engulf this planet in the last half of 2017 and 2018. You can see the spread gets four times wider. Thank you for those of you who are my Patreon supporters. I just released the new newsletter for you all. Look for it in your inbox. It's about trying to forecast out specifically in the beginning of solar cycle 25 when the amplification is going to begin. And it's my firm opinion that after July, we're going to see some real changes in the weather. As you can see, the split becomes wider and wider year upon year. I went into a lot more detail in the report. So double check on your inbox. Make sure you got that. If you didn't, please send me a message and I'll make sure that you get a copy. Also dovetailing with this, abrupteearthchanges.com. This amazing free ebook, Black Death and the Abrupt Earth Changes of the 14th Century. A stellar read. I read it cover to cover. I was enthralled by the information. All these references and they got pieced together so well. And then looking at today's world, moving forward with what happened during this 14th century, the only thing we're really missing is the comets that were spoken of, the arrows, if you will, that brought upon the plagues. It's really interesting, the correlation between today's amplification and the weather changes we're seeing and what they spoke about in the 14th century. It's nearly identical. And just a fun fact here for you, CO2, a trace gas in the atmosphere, it's only one third of 1%. So let's break this down. Left side, you're going to see where it says entire atmosphere. If you go up to the right corner in that, you'll see that little tiny yellow square. That's all the CO2 that's in our atmosphere. Growing levels of activity across all geothermal sites in Iceland, specifically the circled area here. All of Iceland's major volcanoes are showing unusually high levels of activity here on the map. Quick jump back into history, Mount Laki, 1785, but you'll see five of these volcanoes right in the Indonesian archipelago. Two of the largest eruptions in Earth's recent history, 1257 and 1458, right at the bottom of grand solar minimums. 
and a lot of that ash was deposited in the southern hemisphere. But like clockwork, when a grand solar minimum commences, a huge volcanic eruption occurs blocking out sunlight, dropping Earth's temperature. And that 540 AD, that's the late antique little ice age. Now we got Tambor and Somalis next to each other. So you just need to ask yourself which one of these is going to go off as we commence into our new grand solar minimum starting right now. And Maori Aboriginal culture, reddish hues in the aurora when seen down in the southern hemisphere, associated with blood and fire. Oddly enough, blue aurora is showing up far more highly charged than the pinks and reds. Taking a look at the six Maori wooden god sticks, looks very similar to the Mawang Dwe silk comets. And then we go back to the abrupt climate change of the 14th century when arrows were represented as some sort of penetration in the atmosphere of a comet, bringing in a plague. This was not just exclusive to the southern hemisphere, this last solar storm. North Dakota seeing auroras, Ontario, blues again. And then taking a look down in Antarctica, the last previous incredibly intense solar storm back in April, 